This is the Digital Agency Insiders Podcast. Inside, you'll learn how to build, grow, and scale your digital marketing agency all from the comfort of your favorite coffee shop. Let's get started with the show. Hey, everybody, welcome again to the Digital Agency Insiders podcast, the podcast that gives you an inside look into how entrepreneurs built and grew their digital agency. So if this is your first time listening to the podcast, I encourage you to go subscribe to us. If it's iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, no matter where it is, make sure you go and uh, subscribe to us. And then while you're there, drop us a review. So today I have with me my friend, Jeff Hershey. Jeff is an F-16 Air Force pilot turned digital marketer and owner of Viper Consulting. Now Viper Consulting doesn't just create products or trainings, they launch pro uh, processes and systems with the express intent of solving a problem that is in the marketplace for digital marketers, local businesses, and agencies. Hey, Jeff. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Super excited to have you on here. I enjoy talking to you. So I love, I want to, I want to, I want to share your story with everyone. So you went from being an F-16 Air Force pilot to digital marketer. So how in the world did that actually happen? <laughs> uh, by, by accident, I guess. It's kind of like how most of us kind of fall into this. Um, for me, my childhood goal was to be uh, a pilot and then yeah. be an or to be a fighter pilot, essentially. Um, and I got selected to the F-16, which was awesome. I loved it. Uh, I was about six to seven years in and started having some weird back problems and stuff like that. And what happened was I, I had blown a disc in my back, my L4, or sorry, L5S1, and then I had a little bit of a bulge disc uh, in some other spots. And wind up kept flying they're like well as long as you can keep flying just keep going and i was like all right cool like you know we're not going to go and, and we're thing until i figured out that i was really broken <laughs> and couldn't like get out of the airplane anymore uh i just saw the g4 stuff like that so i wound up having surgery uh i thought i was gonna be back in the jet in six to 12 weeks and then unfortunately what happened to me was my disc re slipped and it got to the point after some second opinions waiting a couple months that it was more dangerous to go back in and dig through the scar tissue to, and to fix me. So basically at that point, my career was over as an F-16 pilot. And I was in a weird situation where I worked every day for the, for the Air Force, but knew I was getting out, but couldn't quite go get a job or like start, it was, I was in a weird situation. So while I was sitting there kind of recovering for a couple months, going through the whole process, um, I had my laptop and the whole online marketing thing was starting. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, and I actually started with video marketing and going through, you know, making affiliate sales with videos and, and growing a list doing that. Like before, it's real popular back again now, but yeah. we're talking like 2007, 2008, like YouTube's just now starting to take off. Yeah. Um, so I kind of jumped on that train and I was like, well, why do I want to work for anybody else when I can kind of control what I've got? And if I'm still working for the Air Force for eight hours a day or six hours a day, other than my physical therapy type stuff, I can do this at night. So basically I worked my job and then went and did this at night. And you know, one thing leads to another, right? You start yeah. making money and then I've got other people like, oh, how do you do it? Well, then I'll create a trading product and that turns into a trading product with software. And next thing you know, I've got a consulting company, software products, digital agency with clients. And now I'm 12 years later and it's like, <laughs> wow, this, you know, where did I, where did I go from here? It just, yeah. Yeah, just keep building each, each year. That's awesome. So the question that I have is the F-16 was the, the dream job as a kid growing up. Are you just as happy now doing digital marketing as you were a pilot? Yes. Uh, I, I, and because I get to do what I want and, and go where I, I'm a very, like, I want to do my specific things. And I don't, if you were to put me in a, a room with nobody and, and tell me I can't talk to anybody or do anything or like have fun, I would like just die. Like I, I'd wither off and, and, and die. I'm not like a, a loner type person. I love the camaraderie. I uh -huh. loved uh, fly out the dudes. I love the challenge every single day. That was, I think the biggest thing for me. And a lot of people ask me, Hey, do you fly anymore? And my answer is no. Um, I basically, it's like, you know, you get to the NFL and then you really can't go anywhere else yeah. when you're done. Yeah. So, um, because I can't fly, you know, jets anymore, it's, it, it's kind of like, all right, it's my, my next challenge is now solving problems for other people in business, creating my own softwares and solutions and, and going from there. I love it. I love it. So what is the core service for Viper Consulting? What's the one thing that you guys do there that's just, you're known for? So we're known for 
software paid advertising and, and consulting. And, and I'm a little bit different because I've done a lot of things over the last decade. Yeah. Um, but as a digital agency and, and our sole core purpose, it's paid traffic and paid advertising lead generation, if you will. Okay. Um, a lot of people, if you're a newer agency, if you're a digital agency that's getting started, you hang on the, hey, we can do PPC for your business and hey, we can drive you traffic here. We keep it mysterious. We just say we are lead generation for your business. We can get you X amount of leads per month at this cost. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why we do that is they don't already pre-qualify or, or basically have this thought in their mind of some sort of prejudice of why they do or do not want to work with you. Even though you could be one of the biggest companies out there, uh, when you're talking to a business, hey, we're a lead generation company for local businesses. That's what we do. You don't need to know how. Is your phone ringing? You have yeah. new emails, you have new clients coming in. Yeah. My black box system over here does it for you. And we basically call them lightning campaigns. We can generate leads quickly in the next 30 days for you. And here's what the cost is. And, and that's it. Either they say yes or say no. Yeah. It's a little bit of a different angle than, you know, some of the, I can see we are talking like, uh, you know, with some of your reactions. It's, it, it's really because if you're newer and you're trying to get out there and you're trying to close your first deal, and if everybody's telling you, oh, well, I tried PPC. Everybody knows about PPC. Everybody knows about SEO, social media marketing. They've heard it. They've uh -huh. gone on the chain meeting, all that stuff. All they really want and all they really care about is new customers, new leads, mm -hmm. new clients. That's what I'm selling. Mm -hmm. I'm selling the new leads, the new clients. I'm not selling the, this is what I do. I'm selling the story behind what the end result's going to be. That's what they buy. They buy you. They buy the storyline of what you're going to do to get them that lead. They buy by the results that's what they want i like it i like it so what kind are you going after a specific niche of businesses or is this kind of who, who's your target audience two two major verticals for us home mm -hmm. services and professional services those okay. are so professional services white collar uh type businesses doctors dentists stuff, stuff like okay. that um not necessarily going only after dentists not necessarily going only after chiropractors things like that those professional services in some proven uh, strategies and techniques that we've already used in those markets, right? Um, and realtors are kind of in between the both, but they're a little bit different. They're wishy-washy type people. You know, you got to go for the, the broker, not the one-off realtor, but there are some big guys out there if you're yeah. doing that. Um, you, but like in Arizona, where I live, I probably know a dozen realtors personally. Like, I just go, like, one of the guys that works for my office is a realtor. Like, he works for me, but he's also a realtor. It's like, so, you know, everybody has a real estate license here. Yeah. Um, so I stay away from that, that market in, in my local area, but you can do that too. So yeah. that's the professional level. On the blue collar side, guys that I know that I can make their phone ring, they're going to pick up their own cell phone, pest control, pool okay. circuits, carpet cleaning, um, floor installers. We had a huge contract last year with uh, the major floor installing company, like one of the biggest um, that we were working on and, and generating leads for them. You're talking like you know $10,000 a month uh, in, in advertising that we're basically charging them for to be able to generate those leads. And wow. to do that kind of stuff, it's because we say, hey, look, we can go out there and we can generate the leads for you. Mm -hmm. And they don't, as long as it's legal and they, you know, they don't care. And they're like, well, are you going to go to you know, Angie's list and go scrape people are like, look, I'm going to give you quality leads. We're going to record all the phone calls. You're going to, and they have their own, that, that company had their own system. And, yeah. and what, it ha what wound up happening was I was sending them quality leads and their phone people were messing it up and I can prove it because they, they actually were doing their own recording. Let's go through And I'm going through with the owner of this company. It's a multi-million dollar company and we're listening to it. And he's like embarrassed because his, the people that are answering the phone are getting paid, you know, eight to $12 an hour that they're stumbling through. They're not even asking for any follow-ups or, or the sales, but because I'm generating leads, he still is paying me for each and every one of those leads. And he has to go back and, and save them. So yeah. again, my service is lead generation. <laughs> I can generate you new leads for your business. Yeah. Uh, is, is how many leads do you want? And then this is what the cost is per month for that bucket of leads. Well, that's good because you can't, you're right. You cannot control what happens after you give it to them, how they deal with it. <laughs> right. But, that's a good thing that, that, that's a huge thing for a lot of, especially, you know, year one through three agencies. If you're getting started, quality control, knowing what's going on. You could be said, you might not even know that you are sending them cherry leads like that are absolute buyers. But mm -hmm. once that lead gets to the sales funnel, so that's part of my consulting company too. The other, kind of like add on mm -hmm. is 
You want to have some control over what's going on. Know what's going on. You want to be able to track those leads. You want to see where they're on the funnel and then do some metrics. Metrics are always huge for me, right? Processes and systems. So, you know, now you kind of see where all, everything I do comes mm -hmm. into play is I can then sell them, you know, and I don't have to do it personally. My office have to do it. I know, you know, we've been around for a little while now, so I know guys that do everything, right? Yeah. So you know, I got a guy that does this. I got a guy that does that. Um, <laughs> I can basically then hire uh -huh. contractors for me and just say, hey, do this and, and, and the next thing. But when you get those leads, for us, for lead generation, quality control over what you're handing to your client, just because you turn on an ad or just because you're running their social media campaigns, how many views, clicks, things like that, you need to know those metrics to be able to back up what you're doing. Um, so I was able to walk into a guy and say, here's your phone calls. Here's the transcripts of these sitting over a breakfast deal and, and watching and telling them your guys are like politely, your guys are royally messing this up. And, the, and he, you know, he wasn't embarrassed like because of me, but he was aggravated with his operations manager after that thing. Cause I proved that, Hey, my leads are quality. This yeah. is what your guys are doing. Well, and, you gave him an opportunity to go in and fix something that he didn't know was broken. <laughs> right. But now I have an upsell. I can come in there. I can, I can rewrite your scripts. I can work yeah. with your guys or, you know, in a bigger company like that, they have their own things. Yeah. Always have an opportunity. If anybody asks you, Hey, can you do that? Yes. And then go fire the person. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. You can always do something. You sometimes you just have to figure out the solution. So yeah. they're going to pay you for that solution. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so we figured out the niche that you're going after. Now, how are you going and finding these people? Uh, what are you saying to them to get them into your services? What's your sales pitch? You know, mine's a, a little bit different um, for <laughs> us. So uh, it's, it's, I always try to find, you know, I don't try to buck this, but I always try to find a way that not everybody's doing. So when somebody, yeah, I can go and say, oh, I'm a pilot, all that kind of stuff, try to get people attention. That's, I don't care about that. I, yeah. My staff is what's doing that, right? I'm not doing the selling anymore. Um, when I first get started, um, when I first got started in, in the system, uh, what I was doing, it was paid advertising to a specific landing page. And then, mm -hmm. hey, we can get you X amount of leads per month. Let's get you on. Let's do a consultation, all those kinds of things. I've done uh, the chamber presentations or the networking group presentations too. Mm -hmm. Those do work. Mm -hmm. um, both of those work. First of all, paid advertising, you're paying money, right? A lot of people don't want to spend money up front. I mean, yeah. I, I just spent 15 grand on a funnel for something and I'm like, I haven't even seen a lead come back in for, for my own stuff. So now I look at it from the business owner side. Well, if I'm going to pay you a couple thousand dollars or, or whatever to set this whole thing up and then I have to pay for money to get things in, it, it's a little bit difficult to get started. So, so we did the paid advertising for a little while and then we did the networking and the presentations, but what we really stumbled upon um, was content marketing for us, but not in the sense of, I have a digital agency and I'm going to put up some content on my blog and somebody's going to find me eventually. And you know, I'll be the guy that helps you rank and then do SEO in your local area. We went basically a completely different route than everybody else. We infiltrated all the local groups in our area. So infiltrated, basically we became a member. <laughs> I'm a military guy. So we say things a little bit aggressively, basically we went and joined all the groups, right? And I had my staff go and join all the groups um, in, in the local area. What kind then, of groups? Right? So, so local chambers, local okay. marketing groups for uh, professional services, uh, you know, basically within our state and our town and, and the surrounding areas, as well as, so like there's a, a group near my house called the Cave Creek infamous bullet, bulletin board or something like that. And there's like Phoenix, like, you know, restaurants group and things like that. Oh, so Facebook groups plus in-person groups. You got it. Yep. So gotcha. there's business owners in these groups. I'm like watching the local pizza shop post about their great pizza and, and all those things. Mm -hmm. So for us, we want to become an authority in the group. We want to be able to people reach out to us and things like that. So what we did was we now go out there and either write our own articles or we either go find and leverage curated content. So other articles on how to grow your business using social media, how to grow your business doing this or whatever, like why you need to do paid advertising for your business, you know, 10 ways in 2020 to do lead generation for a local restaurant or for a local chiropractor, new yeah. ways to get clients. So we go find those type of articles. And what we do is we actually have a little piece of tool that we use that allows us to then take that content and share it inside those groups. Now, anybody can go post and share an article, right? Mm -hmm. But what we did was we created a software around this that will then take that piece of content, share it. And then when somebody lands on that, 
it's basically an ad for us because what we do is after about five or 10 seconds, we pop up an opt-in box mm -hmm. and we have a wall content wall, if you will, that mm -hmm. they're reading it, but it's me that they're opting into, not necessarily that page. And yeah. when we're completely upfront about it. Like, Hey, yo, this is Jeff. You just clicked on my link to go here or whatever. But if you want to learn more about this, we brand yeah. our agency, we brand us. We've got people virally sharing it out there. It's in all of these different groups. Now, you start to see this and you become number one an authority in those groups. So think about it to all the guys, you know, that are posting, you know, that are advertisers in your local area, trying to get people to buy their services. Instead, you're the authority on it. So I remember that article from Jeff that you're actually, it's not me. One of the guys in my office that posts them, but yeah. Hey, I remember that article that, that Mike posted that Dustin posted out there and they yeah. got my <laughs> alarm to, to remember to call you. Um, <laughs> So, so that was my Alexa. So, uh, you know, hey, you're an authority on this topic. You know, would you mind this? Or next thing I post, they become a friend with me. I share uh -huh. it on my timeline as well as all of these other groups. And we don't just like blast it out there and, and spare where you find the targeted groups and, and that are right. And you kind of pick and choose as you go. And then we start to build a list, right? Uh -huh. So now I've got a list of targeted business owners and we can grow our list relatively quickly in this area because people want to know about that stuff. You can give them away a PDF if they download or just, hey, do you want more content like this? And then you can send them to your site. You can send them to your agency and then they yeah. have stuff. Now they're following you. We find, uh, what we've also done is we actually then started our own group. So we have a group that's specifically for local business owners in the Phoenix area, local business owners in Arizona. But we own it. We run it. Now we're the moderator of this group. Not only are we bringing people into this group, we're then giving them all the content. And this is a free way for us to advertise. Mm -hmm. Now we ask them, hey, what are your challenges? What are your goals? What are your dreams for 2020 for your business? Hey, we want to grow our presence. Hey, we're looking to do more marketing. Hey, you know, I want my, pay, my website to be on page one. Guess what? I, get, I then survey them, figure out what's up. I know what their pain points are. Yeah. I offer them a solution. I say, hey, we've got, you know, I hear a lot of people that do it. I have a solution to this problem. A couple of days, we're going to run a special. Mm -hmm. Magically, or our agency's running a special on lead generation for the month of January. 50% yep. off, no wa waiving your setup fee, whatever it is. I wouldn't waive your setup fee but because there's some hard costs. But basically, you know, 50% <laughs> off your, your setup fee. Those yeah. kind of things. Now, we've got a unique angle. I'm not just going completely cold at a guy, getting him on a cons consultation to pitch him on why. And I don't care what you do. I don't care what you're selling. If they're just going to go from a cold lead into a consultation, that's a hard sell unless they absolutely know who you are. We've now built that fan base, that group that, that will target you, that you've targeted and we can go after. And by the way, we also pixel everybody that ever goes through our, our um, sites and yeah. we can retarget them with our agency. So yeah. I'm building my brand. They see my logo. You got it. You're just stacking just as stack you go. It one after another, after another. So that's what, that's what we're doing. Uh, I right like it. it's, it's working so really, really well. How many people are in the group right now in the local group? So, uh, I think like 2,200 right now. Okay. And how long ago did you start it? seven, eight months ago. Okay. I, yeah, I, no, we built the software around it. So it took a little time, but yeah, so it's, yeah, it's cool. no, it's great. I absolutely love it. So when it comes to your service, how much are you guys charging for so what you're doing? Depending I know on it probably varies and differs, but what's, what's general. Absolutely. So based, and so it, it depends on what we can do for you, how many leads we can generate you a month. Right. And yeah. are you a professional service or a blue collar service? So blue collar services, we charge a little less, mm -hmm. but you got the one truck pest control guy, right? Mm -hmm. You got the pool service guy that, you know, it's charging 30 people, a hundred bucks a month or whatever. And that's really all he's making is like three to $4,000 a month in the summer because he can only do so many pools. So yeah. you figure out what they should be making and then what the average client value is for them and the lifetime value. Now you move into like professional service, like a doctor or a dentist that goes up. So we're charging anywhere between 500 to $1,500 upfront. For a setup that covers our initial costs, getting them in there, um, mm -hmm. and we typically only run about 20 different types of campaigns in those in those two service uh, verticals that I talked about because we've already proven them. It's copy, it's rinse and repeat okay. for us. It's a yeah. it's a system, right? Yeah. I can go and tackle all these obscure different niches and things like that. I don't go after restaurants. Um, I don't go after those kind of guys. I go after the services that I can then turn on a campaign. Mm -hmm. It's a Facebook, Facebook PPC ad. Reach, you know, uh, like look alike campaign, whatever we want to do, and we generate them leads. 
from yep. there. Uh, and then we charge a monthly fee. It's X amount up to, you know, X amount of leads. So depending on how many leads they, they want. So we normally say 15 to 30 clients a month, and it's about 300 to $900 a month. Nice. All right. So when you actually do get a new client, do you have like an onboarding process that you guys go through um, that's maybe systematized as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> and we actually send them something. And this comes from some of my previous companies and things. And obviously it comes from my, my Air Force background, right? So yeah. um, everything's a checklist. Like if you're going to start an airplane, even from day one in, in the uh, Cessna 152, you have a checklist, the pre-flight checklist. Then you have a pre-start checklist. You have a pre-takeoff checklist, pre-landing yeah. checklist. I have a pre-customer checklist, right? So we have one, uh, and actually we're doing some new stuff in the office right now. So I've got my guys creating a new checklist for us right now uh, for some promotion things. But everything we do, the first time we do it, we, we take the extra effort and time to create a checklist of everything we need to do, no matter what we're doing. So we also have one for our customers. So, hey, welcome to the, the company, you know, Viper Consulting, here's what we do for you. Here's what our expectations are. That checklist for me, is setting the expectations of what they're going to do, what they're going to hear from me, what I need from them, and then what to expect moving forward. If you don't set those expectations up front, so if a guy expects that you're going to call him or he can call you anytime, every day, you're going to have the guy that calls you <laughs> and wants to talk to you 30 minutes every single day. We have two phone calls a month for 15 minutes. That's what we have. We're going to go over your campaigns. We're going to show you what we're doing. We're going to send you a lead generation report every single Friday. That's yeah. what we're going to do. But to do that, I need these things from you. I need access to your account. I need you to add this as your campaign manager. You know, here's my guy. And then what we're going to do is before you get on the call, we're going to need you to have these five things ready for us. And basically I tell them exactly what they need to have written down in front of them. And there's, we send them a PDF. They can print it out with yeah. areas to write those things. Because a lot of business owners, you know, they're 40, 50, 60. They're not 25 to 35 year olds they're they're in that upper the age mm -hmm. a little bit so they want to write things down and they'll mm -hmm. have that or maybe they want to hand it to their office staff because their staff leader is going to do it hey yeah. if you're going to hand this off that person needs to have access to the stuff that i need otherwise we have to cancel this call and do it again now i haven't gotten to the point where i have to implement a fee like if i have to rescheduling fee or anything like that yeah. because if you send them everything you need either they have it or they don't and if they don't have it, well, then we're going to have to book it. It's going to be from a week from now. Yeah. And then when, you know, Dr. X calls because the office manager didn't have things ready. Why are we ready? Well, we sent you guys a checklist. This is where the expectation for the call was. And, and you can't, you know, dance around the issue. Look, we told you this is what we need to be able to generate your leads. You guys didn't have it. Your next mm -hmm. booking is, is now next Monday at, at yeah. 12. Um, and don't be afraid to fire that client because things like that make them difficult. Yes. I get that a lot of people starting out, it's money. You want to have the money coming in. Uh -huh. But if you're spending four hours a week with one client and you're only making 500 bucks a month off of them and they're a pain, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not worth it to you. Mm -hmm. um, I actually wound up getting rid of some bigger clients last year because the guys were difficult about it. And it was like every single thing is like pulling teeth. And, <laughs> you know, or I had the client where you get nothing from them absolutely no response, no text message reply, no email. And then all of a sudden they pop up out of nowhere at 4.30 on a Friday and they're asking you 1,800 things that need to be done by like five. And wow. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's a red flag. Get rid of them. Yeah. No, that's a good lesson. I always say you got to fail and fail hard, but when you find those ones, you've got to get rid of them. That's And it comes with experience, right? It's just oh, like yeah. anything else, you know, but if you hear these things, you know, and if your gut is telling you this might not be the right decision, then yeah. your gut's probably right. Exactly. Exactly. So is there anything special that you do to have customers coming back to you time? I mean, we lose customers from time to time, but is there anything that you do on top of your normal stuff to make sure that they're coming back month after month? The, the normal follow-up. Yeah. Um, you want to, you want to be friendly to them. Uh, I don't necessarily go meet with those clients, uh, out there. Like the, I don't walk in and like, you know, like, Hey, here's a card here. We don't send them anything, things like that. For us, we try to prove our value every single month. If you can show that it's going to hurt their business when they stop handing you money. So if you're making 2,500 bucks for every $500 you spend with me, even if you're making a thousand, mm -hmm. if I handed you $5 every day and then you handed me 10, all right, I you handed me five, I hand you 10 back, right? Mm -hmm. Or switch that around. Yeah. Would you ever stop that? No. <laughs> no. Right? Like, so you make it very, very clear. I don't know why that's dismissive. My Alexa alarm keeps going off. So 
if I make it very, very clear that it's going to be painful for your business if you stop this, then either you're going out of business when you quit with me or you have so much business that you, you don't need me anymore. Yep. So yeah. I prove our, you prove your value every single month. I like it. I like it. So out of everything that you do as a business owner, what's your absolute favorite thing? Solving problems. I like it. uh, uh, and, and, I, and actually, I've been asked this question so much over the last like five or 10 years and <laughs> never really, I, I was like, oh, I like building things like that. I, I went back to why I loved flying the F-16 and why I don't fly anymore is every single time we took off, we were given, even if it was, even if it was the exact same scenario, something changes, right? Yeah. Every single day you come into your business and you're doing the exact same thing. You're trying to sell the same product, the same types of people something pops up. I, I love and I enjoy solving problems. Like just figuring out the solution to things is what excites me. So if I can say, Hey, I want to do this and, and solve a problem or, you know, eventually we're going to help that business get to a certain level where then they have to solve that next problem where I can step yeah. in. Um, or even inside the, the business with teaching my guys, um, you know, here's how we do this. Let's solve that problem. So for me, it's problems and getting a solution to them. I like it. We're so different when it comes to that. I do not like problem solving, <laughs> I don't but I'm like, glad there's people that do. <laughs> I don't like actually having problems. Oh but yeah. It's a fact of life. Like, so yeah. I, I enjoy finding the solution to things. That's good. That's good. So the last question that I have for you is what are you currently uh, reading or listening to right now? That's inspiring. That's pushing you in 2020. That's actually when I looked at your list of questions and I was for some reason, I was one that like I was waiting to, to talk about this one. Um, <laughs> I just picked this up about a month or so ago. I'm halfway through it. I'm actually listening to it. It's an audio book. Uh, it's, it's also a book too. It's relatively new. Um, it's called Presuasion by Robert, Ch Robert Cialdini. Uh, he also wrote Influence uh, about a decade or so ago. Um, okay. It's all about things you do before the sale. Things that you like when people talk about, uh, he talked about bullet points. He said, well, in one of the companies he worked with, they call them action points because, you know, bullets is now, you know, being an ex-military guy, just build yeah. bullet points all day long, right? Yeah. But the wording and how you phrase things or how you prep things in your office or things that people see on a regular basis, there's things that you can do to help trigger more sales. There's things you can do to help get a uh, close easier. Uh -huh. um, and it's a really interesting book. I always love the stuff from him um, and, and everything that he does, but Presuasion uh, is a great book. It's a great audio book. I think it's like four to six hours long, somewhere in there. Um, but it's it's really, really good. I love everything by him. Um, and that's the book that I'm listening to right now. I'm, I got to drive about four I'm sorry to say, you're about to listen to the last half of it on your drive, aren't you? You got it. And I'm actually looking forward to that because uh, when I drive down uh, to Mexico to my condo, um, because obviously I got to do some stuff today for that. But uh, I'll be, I'll turn that on and I'll just drive in the car and, and listen to it. And, um, you know, then I'll go back and either get the cliff notes or have one of my guys go through it and try to figure out and I'll take those bullet point action items out of it and be yeah. like, yes, that's a point that I loved about the book. And we're going to, we're going to put that in. So like well, not just reading it, but putting it into play. That's important. Got it. Robert Cialdini. Yep. So it's a great book. I like it. I like it. Well, I'm always looking for new things to read and listen to. So I always like to hear what other people are listening to because you're, you know, around other things than I am. So thank you so much. And I appreciated you being on the podcast. And if you guys are listening to this and you want to hear more from Jeff, go to Digital Agency Insiders, sign up for our membership where we got a two week free trial and we do a very in-depth uh, interview with Jeff. Uh, and that'll be in there actually releasing in a couple of weeks. So yay. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. You've been listening to the Digital Agency Insiders Podcast. For more tutorials on growing your digital marketing agency, make sure to visit digitalagencyinsiders.com.